first, I would uh, I'd like to thank Mohegan and uh, and Mike Mazzulli. This is a spectacular venue for fights, and for a Thursday night to have that kind of crowd out here and to have the response that we got, the electricity in that venue was just magic. These guys put on a great show, and Mike and his team, from a commission perspective, are about as tight as you can find anywhere in the country. So. Um, that was magic. We are going to be seeing um, what I think a lot of people want to see. We're going to see uh, Ryan Thomas fight Ben Askren. And we're going to see that fight happen. We're going to see that fight happen on May 20th in Dallas, Texas at the Verizon Theater. And that will be a spectacular matchup. And obviously, there's a lot of uh, a, a, a lot of meat on that bone, and, uh, and a lot of words that have gone back and forth. The two guys who I know respect each other a great deal, but can't wait to get back in there and finish some unfinished business. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Dan Hornbuckle, Steve Carl will be on that same show, and that will be a magical matchup that will basically tell us who's going to be fighting for the right to face Lyman Good for our welterweight title. So that's going to be a lot of fun. That's going to be a lot of fun. But, by the way, we just got back our numbers for the NBC show, and they were spectacular. So there are an awful lot of people staying up till 2 o'clock in the morning to watch that 30-minute highlight condensed version of our show, which is a great show, and the production team here at Bellator is doing an amazing job. You're doing a show like this every single week, and you've got to roll from city to city across the country, and you're, you literally have no time to set up and no time to get ready. When you're in an organization like Mohegan Sun, and you have the kind of professionals that they have here that set this arena up and set up production and set up lighting to work with you. It makes your life so comfortable and so much easier. So it is really a pleasure to be here at Mohegan. We're looking forward to coming back because I'm sure we will be back here uh, again. If you, if you didn't get a chance to see the show, watch it on NBC late night on Saturday night. Watch it on Telemundo Saturday night and a Mundo's highlight show on Saturday night. And uh, catch us every Thursday night live on Fox Sports Network. So thank you guys. And uh, any of the fighters up here and myself would be happy to take any questions. Wow, what a magical night tonight in the Mohegan Sun. Um, I want to thank all the fans, especially Tyler Stinson for uh, taking the fight short notice. You know, tough man, you had to train very, very hard against uh, what he was bringing to the table. Um, looking around and seeing the other powerhouses in the welterweight division, man, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing and staying to the grindstone right back to work on Monday morning. Obviously, it didn't go the, the way that I had it in my mind. Uh, you know, I played this fight in my head about a million times, and I found a million different ways to win. Um, but, you know, when you're fighting one of the best in the world, you know, you make one mistake, and, and your night's over. And I made one mistake. I stayed on the ground with them, and, you know, that's not my game. My game is to, you know, throw strikes and punches. And uh, i just like to thank, you know, Bjorn and the whole Bellator team for having me out, giving me this opportunity. I, I wouldn't want to fight anybody else. You know, everybody said that, that Dan was the favorite to win this thing. And uh, so, you know, I want to fight the best in the world. Okay. And I, just, uh, I would like to thank Bellator for the opportunity, uh, all the managers and all my team in Brazil. I believe it was a pretty good fight to watch. And people in America could see what a uh, big thing is. I believe the fight with Wilson, Wilson Hayes is going to be a pretty good fight, and I, I'm pretty, pretty sure I can win this tournament. You know, I came in here with 100% uh, confidence in my mind. I, I knew that I was going to win the fight. Um, Patricio being a tremendous opponent, I, um, you know, I was very, very um, happy to fight him. And uh, like I said, you know, I really expected to win this fight. Um, I played the, the fight myself with my mind and, and I, I saw myself winning. But uh, he's a dangerous guy and uh, it didn't turn out the way I wanted it to tonight. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, it's a learning experience and, uh, you know, a warrior has to uh, pick himself up and learn from defeat. And I'm definitely going to come back stronger and I'm looking forward to uh, fighting in this organization again and, and uh, picking up a win. I'm kind of wondering where Steve is at. He's probably icing his face. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm very disappointed. I thought I won. Uh, I think the crowd thought I won. Everybody that watched on TV thought I won. Um, I come out slow. It's a bad habit of mine. Um, I thought I lost the first round, but I thought I won the second two. Uh, I don't want to be a sore loser, but I guess I am. <laughs> first of all, of course, I want to thank Bjorn and uh, all of Bellator. I mean, this is a big opportunity for me. You know, I'm only 22 years old. I've been doing this sport for a long time. And, you know, uh, I was questioning myself coming into this. You know, um, I was supposed to face Jim Wallhead and last minute uh, opponent change. And, you know, I don't want to take anything away from, you know, uh, Ryan, he, out of everybody in this tournament, he is the number one guy that deserves a second shot. You know, and I'm really glad that he got a, he got his second shot. And um, you know, I hope I hope he uh, 
you know, goes out, fights hard against Ben. You know, I hope he, uh, I hope he does well. You know, of course, he beat me, so I want to see him make it to the final. <laughs> First of all, I'd like to thank uh, Norm Rebney and Bellator uh, and the Volcano for bringing him back uh, for a second chance. Uh, yeah, it was a magical night, some awesome, awesome fights. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, McClintock for, for, you know, uh, fighting me on, on short notice. I know he wasn't prepared uh, for me, but uh, I think we had a pretty good fight. He had me in a lot of trouble. I mean, this kid, uh, he's got a bright future ahead of him, only 22 years old. And look, just looking at his, uh, his his record up on the internet, I knew he's going to come out like a madman. I mean, he had me in a lot of trouble. He, he hit me hard and had my back, uh, but uh, I weathered the storm and came back, and, and he's going to be around for a long time. He's got some great things. Uh, up, coming up in this future and about the Askren fight, yeah, I'm very, very uh, happy to hear that that's going to be my next fight. Uh, I want that fight so, so bad. I'm glad, glad Bellator is going to give it to me. Uh, ben said he'd fight me, and I think that's what the fans want. So, so, so thank you everybody for, uh, for you know, uh, bringing that fight on and, and for going for making it happen. Thank you. Uh, wasn't the happiest with my performance tonight. Uh, Brett's a really tough guy. Uh, he caught me the really hard knee right off the bat, the first 10 seconds, right in the solar plexus, and then we went to the ground. He just tore my body up. I was like, wow. He just took everything out of me. And uh, that was really tough to try to push through all those three rounds. He hits like a freight train, dude. Wow. I'm a, I'm a fan of Scott Coker's organization, Strike Force, and I buy the UFC pay per views. And I'm a fan of those organizations. And sometimes fights work out beautifully, and sometimes fights don't. Um, I'm a extremely firm believer in the, in the system and the philosophy that we've got in place in terms of a tournament format. It's objective and fighters control their destiny. And I believe, as sure as I'm sitting here with these gentlemen right now, that if you give guys that opportunity, you will get an electrified level of performance. I think you get more out of people when they know exactly where they're going and they know exactly what the result will be if they win or lose. So um, we've been fortunate. Georgie Carcanian came with an amazing knee that ended up being a YouTube highlight sensation about against Val Quadge. Pat Kern electrified everybody with a one-punch knockout overhand right against, against Mike Ricci. Um, you know, the moments keep coming for us. And, and at first I thought we were kind of lucky, and now I look at it and I say, and, and I begin, I've begun to believe that it's because this is one shot, and if you win, you move on, and if you lose, you go home. So you're getting performances at, at, a, at a very high level. And, and I think I'm, we're fortunate, but it's, it has nothing to do with us. It has to do with what's at stake and the gentleman sitting up here with me. This is an interesting one. It's our first uh, tweet coming in with the question. This comes from none other than Ben Askren. Uh, <laughs> and it states, I've never tweeted twice in the same night before, but I feel this is necessary. Bjorn, thank you for making my road to the finals so easy. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Although, Burn! although seemingly directed <laughs> at Bjorn, <laughs> the feeling is it might be more so directed at Ryan. So Ryan, if you would like to address that comment. Yeah, I'm really uh, getting a distaste for that man. Uh, he, he didn't beat me the first time. He didn't even hurt me. I wasn't in danger in that whole fight. I didn't get punched. I didn't get choked. Uh, he's not going to hurt me this time. That guy can't beat me. He's got nothing nothing for me. I'm going to smash his face. Yeah. <laughs> we would love to go down to Mexico. It's tough to do international fights when you're doing a weekly broadcast because there's so much that has to be moved. There's huge trucks and there's huge lighting, and you've got about three days to set up and two days to travel. So to try to go into Mexico on a weekly series is very tough. To try to go into Mexico for uh, specials, conceivably in the July time frame or something like that, that might work. But on a weekly series basis to get to Mexico or to go deep into Canada would be, you, you just don't have, there aren't enough uh, you know, hours in each day. Did you think you won the fight? Um, I knew it was going to be close. I knew it would go either way. But the fans saw the last minute and a half of that round, and uh, that was all Brett. And that was the last thing they saw. So um, <clears throat> I was just tasting about how it ended up. I thought it would go either way. And, I kind of had a bad taste in my mouth too with the decision. I thought it really could have gone either way. And, you know, getting beat last minute and a half of a, of a fight kind of leads you to head down too. So I think Brett did a great job. Definitely deserves another chance. What did you guys think in the room? <laughs> <laughs> really? Um, <laughs> <laughs> This video is sponsored by FindMMAGym.com. 
Looking for a new place to train? Head over to the best online directory for MMA gyms across the U.S. Find MMAgym.com.